At some point, you will have to stop all this frolicking. Nobody buys the cow if they can get the milk for free. It gets much worse for our fat girl Angie. Angie's at her house having fun times with some new man when her best friend's mother shows up looking for her best friend Didi who is currently sequestered in her boyfriend's house after running away from home. Long story. Anyway, our girl Angie answers the door in a robe hinting at her spectacular boobage. Her impatient lover is in the bedroom urging her to rush back to their kinky fun. Didi's mother looks at Angie, fidgets with her robe, then says, I kid you not. Nobody buys the cow when they can get the milk for free. I would play it for you, but the copyright gods was like, hell no. She looks Angie in the face and with her entire chest says, at some point, you will have to stop this frolicking. Nobody buys the cow when they can get the milk for free. What is this? if not a brazen attempt to shame her for her sexuality and pursuit of sexual pleasure. Hello, fat shaming our old friend. Somehow, fat women have it worse when it comes to being shamed for their pursuit of sexual pleasure. For some reason, fat women are framed as desperate for men's attention and therefore willing to bang and be banged by any willing man who gives them the tiniest scrap of attention. You've had the jokes about fat women not being sexually desirable and only getting some action from drunk men who realize the next day that they went home with a two that they thought was a six. Can we, can, we not, can we not talk about me for one second? How about you? Fine. What do you want to say? Who is the new guy in your life? Because I mean, last I checked, it was a triple but <laughs> ah, That was last weekend. So. Well, we keep it like I'm bad. I'm not like that bad. I don't know. You like your variety. No, 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 no. Exactly. <laughs> so you know. So are you? I'm just being spicy. Ah, Angie, your life is finished. Your life is finished. Your life is not finished. Your life is not finished. Stop being so dramatic. Why won't I be dramatic? Why won't I be dramatic? Do you know everything I did for that guy? I cooked for him, Didi. I paid some of his bills. You paid his bills? I said I paid from my pocket. I took care of his mother. His... And the sex. We had so much sex. It was weird positions. I was upside down. Like the nightmares. He told me we were friends with better friends. Tell me you guys were dating. I just assumed you were just friends. I, I, I you're supposed to be my best friend. Oh, I'm sorry. See, this is why I tell you to always define your relationships, Angie. Somehow, fat women are both sexually undesirable and alarmingly promiscuous. Go figure. It is constantly reinforced to us that fat women are not sexually desirable, with messaging going as far as suggesting that they are not deserving of sex until they lose weight and fit society's standards about what is considered desirable. I have had women being advised not to gain too much weight after getting married or being advised to lose post-baby weight fast lest they turn their husbands off and push them into the arms of the size 8 women out there. This interaction serves to remind us, just in case we had forgotten from our earlier conversation with Didi, about Angie's endless frolicking with men. And then she's told about cows and milk. That whole nobody buys the cow thing is problematic on so many levels. First of all, what's with viewing women as objects that can be purchased and owned? Second, why is sex something that diminishes women's value and desirability, but not men's? It's like men bang you, and now you're in what shit? If there's something about coming into contact with a dick that somehow diminishes a woman's value, then friends, maybe, maybe it's something wrong with the dick, not the woman. Assuming that getting bought is getting married and not having your milk just haphazardly drunk for free, why is marriage the goal of romantic relationships? It's assumed that marriage is synonymous with commitment, which anyone who's even half-conscious and looking at our society knows is faulty logic. The fact that a couple stood in front of people and signed a special government paper promising not to bang other people doesn't mean shit. There really is no glory in being the cow that was bought. You'll just be milked along with other cows and maybe even a few bulls that you may or may not know about. Then there's the idea that women's decisions, women's choices, should revolve around what men want and consider acceptable so that they can get bought. Sorry, pit. You never hear men being threatened with not being chosen by women if they do something. But women always have this sort of damocles hanging about their heads about how they won't be picked. And the list is long. Don't look a certain way. Don't talk a certain way. Don't be in a certain income bracket. Don't have a certain body count. Don't be a certain body size. Women hate 
all the time. It's insane how much power rests in the hands of men. Women are just standing there, twiddling their fingers, waiting to be picked. It's like society doesn't want women actively picking. The full extent of women's choice is supposed to be picking from among the men who have expressed an interest in you. Meanwhile, men get to go out there and shoot their shot without being limited only to the women who approach them first. Until recently, it wasn't socially acceptable for women to ask men out, and it still largely remains something only a few women dare to do. It's also on men to decide when they're ready to get married and then ask women. Women don't exercise as much choosing and decision power as men do, and this power imbalance permeates every part of heterosexual relationships. It's really nuts what we ask women to do in this society. It's like whatever men want is what women have to be. Jill Scott said it best in her fantastic poem, Nothing is for Nothing. This poem is called Nothing is for Nothing. Mm, if you feel it, holler when you hear it. <laughs> I had been turning tricks longer than I actually knew it. Being whatever they wanted me to be, whenever they wanted me to be it. A freak! Inside, outside, kitchen counters, laundromats, two at a time, hotels, motels, and back seats of lease cars, vans, and jeeps. Made myself like it, because they liked it. And I liked that they liked it, so I continued being the perfect image of a wet dream. Nasty, wild, exotic, erotic. Freak was what they wanted, so freak was who I was. And everybody was walking around talking about me. Like teenage pregnancy wasn't becoming synonymous with being black and woman. Like America wasn't suffocating our thoughts. Like there was nothing to talk about but what I was doing or screwing. And I thought the whole damn thing was ridiculous, which it was. Because I was content giving my men a little heaven between their struggle to breathe and contemplation of suicide. Wasn't I good for the cause? Closed mind, open legs, making niggas forget why they so damn angry. Wasn't I good? Then the mood swung as well, the tempo, and I became an ideal. So they want her pretty and docile, caring and stupid. And there I was on your Mark, Seth, Joe, and I was Susie Homemaker on the hunt for love. Cooking and cleaning, ironing, faithful and a freak, because that's what they liked. And I liked being what they liked, so what they liked was who I was. <sighs> a prostitute. Selling my soul for emotional gain. Struggling not to be the third generation of lonely women in my family. Struggling to gain, but gaining nothing but confusion, frustration, illusion, and emptiness, because there was no love, just empty condom wrappers on the floors to be discarded like me. A prize performer long before I actually knew it, too, because I was faking me out of the me I would become. The me that I see now. The me who holds on to herself with both hands and all feet. The me who must have love and give it. The me who brings more to the table than good looks in a wet hole. The me that is confident and intelligent and filled to the brim with respect for me. And a freak. Because that's what I like. And I like being what I like. And what I like. It's all a part of what I am. Thank you. Doubtless, there are people who would argue that the cousin male comment was not in bad faith. Let's consider the validity of that argument. A good faith argument for why someone who likes and respects you would compare you to bovine on sale for the express purpose of being milked is that they are trying to protect you protect you from men who only want to use you for sex and then leave you high and literally dry. Women have long been viewed as conquests for men who will do and say anything to get into women's pants and then leave them immediately after getting off. Heterosexual relationships have an inherent imbalance with women, usually the commodity being consumed by men. We've all had comments like if a man paid for dinner, the woman owes him sex. The good faith is that women who are telling you about cows and milk are doing so to protect you by reminding you to be careful because men are swine. Apologies to pigs everywhere. Except it's not the same. 
Be careful and wary of men is not the same as if you give the milk for free, nobody will buy the cow. The thing about language is you have to say what you mean or it's just nonsense. And the truth is when people talk about women and cows, they're talking about women's worth being linked to their sexual pursuits or lack thereof, and the diminished interest men will have in wifing them as a result. Lily's mother doesn't say that to Angie because she's concerned that the fella in the bedroom may be taking advantage of her. We know that there was no good faith because Chidima, her own daughter, is presently at her boyfriend's place where we have seen her in various states of undress. She's obviously, demonstrably, giving away the milk for free. When her mother eventually finds her, she doesn't say boo to her about cows and milk. Not one word about it when it's obvious Didi and Raj have been sexually intimate. What's the difference? Isn't her daughter also giving away the milk to a fellow who is yet to buy the cow? The only time Didi is shamed for sex is by her wicked witch of the West, soon-to-be mother-in-law, which is another argument for why such things are not said in good faith. In a capitalist society, capitalist logic seeps into everything and relationships are not exempt. Somehow there's something transactional about sex. When they will talk about how Nawal al Sadawi and others have made the argument that all sex is transactional, with the only difference being prostitutes are paid in cash and others are paid in kind or not at all. For now, let's talk about cows being bought. Women are encouraged to withhold the milk until they get the commitment in the form of marriage. Marriage, which is often an economic position in a society in which most of the wealth is in the hands of men. The logic that somehow men come to own women in marriage is why marital rape was not considered a real problem for a long time. Most religious traditions, like Christianity and Islam, strongly discourage denying your spouse sex, even framing it as sinful and or displeasing to God. Women's value is not tied to sex and how much or how little of it they've had. It's also not tied to men's perception of them or their desirability in their eyes. Women are not commodities to be purchased and owned by men. Women can also want and enjoy milk, milking others and being milked. And can we just stop with shaming women and fat women in particular for pursuing their sexual pleasure? If that woman had said that cow thing to me, I'd be like, I know. I keep telling them to stop giving it away for free or I won't buy the bulls and they just refuse to listen to reason. What would you do? Hmm? 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 What would you do?